Right, so we're off and running then. Welcome to tonight's webinar. As you can see, tonight's webinar is called Personal Development. And this is uh, one of a series of eight webinars that I run. I call them the, uh, the Clean Easy Circle of Success. Um, ooh, Louise, I'm not quite sure why you haven't got any slides. You, you might need to log off and log back on again, maybe. Can I just check that other people can see that first slide, okay, or the, the circle of success that I'm, I'm showing up there? Just make sure it's not me. Yeah, thanks guys. I think it must be something at your end, Louise. You might try logging on off and on again, maybe. Um, okay, so yes, so the, the, the first three um, webinars that I run there uh, are all about the, the catalog side, the retail side, I suppose, um, which is all about getting started your first few weeks and building that custom base. Um, the next couple, four and five, are all about team building. And the last three, six, seven, and eight, this one that I'm going to do now, are all about the other skills and disciplines that you need to grow a really successful business. So, um, as I said, they're all recorded. So if you find that if you just started, for example, Zoe, I know you just started, you could, when I show you where the recordings are later on, if you want to go back and watch numbers one and two or something, um, then hopefully you'll find them useful and that way you don't have to wait a couple of weeks to, to get to those ones. So personal development, what's personal development all about? <clears throat> um, this is a, a description I like to, to use. It's a process of self-education where skills and knowledge chosen by you are learned in order to improve the quality of your life. So kind of what does all that mean? Well, basically, it's not like school. The, the, the main thing about school is you're told these are the subjects that we're going to teach you. Later in life, a lot of people start getting into personal development and basically you can choose what areas you want to learn on. And that's kind of the beauty of it really because typically you learn a lot better when you've chosen what you want to learn. Um, and why is it important? Well, in the last module, a couple of weeks ago now, uh, in the last module we talked about the fact that all clean easy distributors when you first start we all have exactly the same opportunity we all have the same catalogs the same products the same overheads the same opportunity basically but despite that some will succeed and some won't and the reason one of the the main reasons was your attitude what what your attitude is to, to uh, the, this business and we, we explained why attitude was important and how can you make sure that you are one of those that does succeed? Well, self-education will have a huge impact on that. And that's why this is really, really important. Um, Jim Rohn, one of my favourite speakers and um, authors, said, formal education will make you a living and self-education will make you a fortune. Most people come out of school with enough education to, to get a job, to make a living. If you start to educate yourself on certain things, you can do a lot better than that. So I just want to give you a little bit of an example about the, the, the power, I suppose, of, of uh, self-education or personal development. And when I was at school, um, I you know, did reasonably okay. It was back in the days of all levels, so I got a um, bunch of all levels, some A-levels. I went to university for a year, but to be honest, I, I wasn't really ready for it. I wasn't mature enough. The, the first year, I didn't do very much work, just messed about, really, and dropped out. Um, and while I had been at school, I'd got a couple of more levels in languages. I wasn't a natural linguist. I was more kind of into maths and sciences and stuff. I got a grade B French, and that was pretty much entirely down to a brilliant teacher, and a, a pretty abysmal um, grade E in German. Fifteen years later, I retook those exams, and I got a grade A in French and a grade A in German. Now... Do you think I had a sudden skill in languages that kind of appeared overnight? Well, of course not. I, the reason I got better grades was because I actually went to evening class and I worked really hard on them because I wanted to. Basically, what had happened was the company that I worked for, in two different years this was, the company that I worked for had been taken over by a French company and there was some opportunities to go and work in Paris. And I thought, oh, that sounds brilliant. I'd love to do that. And, and I thought one of the um, the things that might help in my application to, to uh, move into that department was if I started to learn some French. So I went to an evening class and I just really worked hard. And, and the important bit at the bottom there is because I wanted to do it, 
I worked hard at it. And because I worked hard, I got the results I wanted, a grade A. The German was exactly the same. I, I actually then changed companies sometime later to another company, which was actually had a German head office. There were some opportunities to go and work over in Germany. And again, I thought having a, an evening, uh, having a, a qualification in the language might stand me in good stead. Um, and, and that's exactly what happened. So the point I'm trying to get across is if you choose to learn something, you will often work much harder at it because it's your decision, it's your choice. And the results, as a result of that, the results are much better. <laughs> that makes sense. Now, that's all very well. I don't suppose you came here to learn about French and German O levels. So let's bring that back to Clean Easy. Why do people join Clean Easy? Well, it's usually not because they have a passion for delivering catalogues. It's usually because they want to make some changes to their lifestyle. They want to improve their lifestyle somehow. Now, I know Zoe's only just joined, but for the rest of you who have been in the business for maybe a year or two or a few more years, do you have the lifestyle that you wanted yet? And have you achieved it yet? And what I'm going to explain to you in a moment, hopefully, is if you haven't quite yet achieved what you're looking for out of Clean Easy, what do you need to do? And this is what I'm hoping to go through with you tonight. So let's break this down into a, a few smaller steps. To get some kind of improved lifestyle, and by that, for the moment, I'm just going to talk about the financial benefits of Clean Easy. There are lots of other benefits, that the friendships that you gain, the, the fantastic trips that those of you who are familiar with me will know. We've just come back from an amazing trip to Venice where Myrna was there and there was some, you know, met lots of uh, wonderful people. Um, so there's all sorts of other benefits to Clean Easy, but most people, when they join Clean Easy, usually have a desire to increase their income and that will help improve their lifestyle. So. The results that you're looking for would typically be more customer orders, a good customer base, and some team members maybe if you want to get into the team building, and a residual income as a result of that. And if you have those, if you have a good customer base and you're getting lots of orders, or you have that residual income, that should result in the improved lifestyle that you need. So those results are the first step, if you like. Now. How do we get results? They don't just come and land on a plate. We don't just get them um, sort of when we wake up in the morning. To get the results, you need to take some actions. And those actions would typically be when you're first starting off delivering and collecting your catalogues, or if you're looking to get into team building by speaking to people about the opportunity. So you need to take some actions. Now, before you take those actions, what you will probably need is a good attitude. If you wake up every morning and think, oh, it's a bit dumb out there, I don't think I'll bother delivering my catalogues. Or if you're sort of thinking, oh, I'm a bit nervous about speaking to people, maybe I'll leave it until next week. If you don't have a good attitude, you will never take those actions. And because you're not taking the actions, you're obviously not going to get the results. So a great attitude, the sort of, you know, if they can do it, so can I type of attitude, is really essential to getting that improved lifestyle. And your attitude, whether it's a good attitude or a bad attitude, whether it's a positive attitude or a negative attitude, a lot of that is based on what we call your philosophies on life. I'm going to explain a bit more about that in a moment. So that kind of circle basically means that if you have some good philosophies in life, that will give you a good attitude. You'll be positive about things, um, and that good attitude will result in you taking the actions that you need to take, delivering those catalogues every day, you know, 200, 400, 600 catalogues a week, whatever you need, and speaking to people about the business, those actions will then give you the results. Delivering the catalogues will deliver the orders, build you that customer base and so on. So, oops. So hopefully you can see there that to get that improved lifestyle, which is hopefully what you joined Clean Easy for, then you need to combine a number of things to, to achieve all of that. So as I've said, the philosophy, which I'm going to talk about in a moment, will give you a good attitude, which will encourage you to do all of the actions that you need to do. The actions will automatically produce results, which will lead to a good, improved lifestyle. So, that's all very well. How do you get yourself a good philosophy? Just pop down your local Tesco's and get a pound and a half of good philosophical baked beans, please. Well, 
I was going to say, unfortunately, you can't buy it in Tesco's, but actually, in a way, you can. Because a good philosophy in your life comes from the books that you read, the CDs that you listen to, and the people that you associate with. One of the amazing things from the, the conferences in Venice, apart from the, just the, the, you know, the wonderful environment and, and everything, is the people that you get the opportunity to sit with. I made so many new friends, and you're chatting to people who are really, really successful in the business, and associating with them and making friends with them so that you, you know, you kind of keep in contact is so, so valuable. So, you can educate yourself. You can choose to read good books. You can choose to listen to educational CDs. And you can educate yourself. And as I said there, you can start a program of personal development. Now, who can do that? Anybody can. You know, anybody amongst us today can make a start on this personal development journey. And it is a journey. It's not just like a program that you can say, right, read these three books and then you're done. You will find that as you get more and more into it, you get more interested. You find other areas of your life that you want to work on. And so you'll find it's a, it's a fantastic discipline to get into, the, the reading and listening to CDs and talking to people. And Jim Rohn said, the greatest value in achieving success is not the money that you make, but the person you become. A lot of people say, oh, you know, it'd be really nice to be successful because I would have a lot of money. And, and that's true in a way. But if you can imagine two people, let's suppose one person wins the lottery and another person is a bit of an entrepreneur. They work really, really hard at building their clean, easy business. They learn lots of skills and they kind of um, put a lot of effort into it. Now, one person wins the lottery. They've got a million pounds, let's say. The other person has a big residual income from their clean, easy business. Let's say they've got a million pounds as well. But you could say they're both equally as successful. But actually, if something were to happen and they both suddenly lost all of that money. Maybe they'd invested their money in some property. The property sort of collapsed or whatever. They lost their million pounds. The person who had, who had bought the property with the, the, the lottery winnings is stuffed, really, because you know, the chances of them winning the lottery again are pretty slim. But the person who has learned all of those skills and has built a successful business can do it all over again because the skills haven't disappeared. The knowledge hasn't disappeared. So the person they became is actually more valuable to them than the money that they earned. So, how do we start? Well, a great way to start is just to start reading 10 pages of a good book every day. Now, by a good book, I don't mean Harry Potter, nice novels, great, I like that Harry Potter stuff myself. That's kind of entertainment. What you're looking for is educational. I'm going to give you a few um, recommended books in a moment. Um, but if you're reading 10 pages every day, even with 115 days off in a year, that's 2,500 pages of knowledge. That's 10 good books, which is absolutely fantastic self-education. You would not believe how your life would transform if you read 10 good books. Um, the alternative is, I've got to admit, I tend to listen to CDs a lot more than I read at the moment. But you can, so many books these days are available on audio CD, or you can kind of download big chunks of things from um, YouTube, or there's all sorts of kind of, you know, audio downloads and things that you can get. So listening to 10 minutes of an audio CD every day is the same. And I mentioned earlier about um, associating with successful people. This is, a, this is often really, really true, and, and sometimes you need to look into the mirror um, when you're asking yourself this. It's the four people you spend the most time with are broke, you'll be the fifth. And that's often true because you, you kind of tend to find you hang around with people that are the same as you. And if you're at a point in your life where you want to make some improvements and some changes, then if you don't make some changes, then nothing will change. So sometimes you might need to look at the people you're spending your time with and say, actually, I'm going to spend a bit more time with these successful people because I want to learn what they're doing and what can I learn from them. There's a few little philosophies and, and the, the, that I really, really like. And I just wanted to bounce a couple off you um, to, to give you some thoughts really on this. Um, so um, one of my favourite ones is take responsibility for everything going on in your life. Now, um, I'll try and ex explain that a little bit. If you start blaming someone or something, for an event or something that's happening, for a circumstance in your life, 
you lose the ability to do anything about it. For example, if you're on a job and you're, you really want to have a pay rise, you haven't had a pay rise for ages, and you start to blame your boss. You know, you're slightly saying, oh, bloody, I haven't had a decent pay rise for ages, cost of everything is going up, I'm just feeling skint all the time. My boss won't give me a pay rise, it's his fault that my life is miserable. Now, another way of looking at it is to say, okay, if I want to get a pay rise, I probably need to get a promotion at work. So I'm going to find out what skills I would need in order to be able to get a promotion. And I'm going to take an evening class in whatever it might be. You know, exactly as I said at the beginning, when I was taking French and German, I didn't do it because I wanted to go on holiday to France. I did it because I thought it would allow me to get a promotion to move into a, another part of the business. So by, by looking at it from that point of view, you kind of take control. You're no longer sat there feeling stressed out, waiting for your boss to do something that you might not do. You're taking control over it. And even if that doesn't get you a promotion, you've actually got some skills now. So you could, you're in a position to apply for another job with a different company because you've got extra skills. So suddenly you start to take control of your future rather than uh, relying on, on other people. To, to do that for you and another thing I hear a lot of time a lot of the time is people saying oh yeah well that's all very well but I don't have time to do that sort of thing I've got all these other things that I need to do actually again it's much better to say we all have 24 hours in the day and I choose to spend my time doing this so if you choose to spend your time watching Coronation Street or going out for a drink with your friends or you know whatever it might be that's fine as long as you understand that you're choosing to do that, you could instead choose to spend the time you know, learning French or, or understanding how team building works or watching these webinars or whatever. And one of the big things about all of this philosophy is it really reduces your stress because if you're in control of everything, if you're choosing to make the decisions, whatever the decision is, I often choose to go for a cup of coffee during the day. I like to have a bit of a break if I've been out delivering orders or whatever. Now, I could argue maybe I should go home and just do a lot of team building calls instead. But actually, I choose to have a bit of a break and take a cup of coffee. It's one of my, my kind of pleasures in life. And you can choose whatever is important to you as well. So that's one philosophy. Um, another philosophy which I really like is the fact that success is just a few correct decisions repeated every day. It's rarely a major decision that went the right way. And equally, failure is not usually a, a major disaster that you did wrong, a decision that you took that was a complete mess. It's more often just a few errors in judgment repeated every day. A good example of that is, is weight loss, for example. I guess everybody knows somebody, maybe themselves as well, who has been trying to lose weight. And you don't lose weight by overnight making some decision and the, the following morning you've lost four stones. What happens is you decide that every morning you're going to eat an apple instead of the bar of chocolate. And that every day you make that same correct decision. If that decision instead is, actually I think I'm going to have a Mars bar this morning and then I'm going to have a topic and then the next day I'm going to have a bar of chocolate. Just those errors in judgment repeated every day will lead you to put weight on rather than lose it. So I hope that kind of explains a little bit about that. As I said uh, there, you don't succeed overnight by making the right decision, and you don't fail overnight. And that's exactly the same with your business. If you sort of think, actually, I'm going to just put an extra 50 catalogues out there today. Instead of going for a drink with my friends, I can go and put 50 catalogues out. It'll only take me half an hour. Um, or I'm going to start doing a few extra leaflet dr drop to, to find some team members. Or I'm going to read 10 pages of a good book. Those little decisions repeated every day will lead you to success or failure. And the last one, and this is particularly true of our business, help enough people get what they want out of life and you can have anything that you want out of life. If you start getting into team building, you'll find lots and lots of people um, who are um, just looking to uh, improve their life a little bit. And if you can help them achieve that, show them how to earn an extra £50 a week, help them get started, you know, you know, you're investing a bit of time and some money in that with them. If you do that with enough people, you can have anything that you want out of your clean, easy business. So, I mentioned earlier about some books to help you get started. 
these are a few that I recommend. There's lots and lots. I, my a big suggestion would be to speak to your successful upline and see what see what they uh, are looking for. What what their books could uh, sorry what they recommend in terms of books that have helped them. So a couple of Jim Rohn ones. My my first and favourite was is a CD called Building Your Network Marketing Business. Quite a short CD uh, audio CD, but I just find Jim Rohn so easy to listen to. And it just makes so much sense in what he's saying. It's, uh, this is just about network marketing. It's not specific to do with Clean Easy at all. But um, have a listen to that. You'll find that really, really useful. And something a little bit broader is a book that he wrote called Seven Strategies for Wealth and Happiness. And that's just a great book about setting your goals, um, you know, investing money. It talks a little bit about that as well. And it's in this book that he talks a lot about the life philosophies that I've mentioned earlier. So definitely recommend getting either of those, or both, if you can. Um, another couple of books that I really like, um, one's called The Slight Edge by Jeff Olson. The other one is The Compound Effect by Darren Hardy. And they both have the same kind of edge to them, <laughs> the same kind of story, basically. And that is the fact that it's not the big decisions that determine your success or otherwise. It's the little ones you make every day. And those are just really good books at getting that across. Um, Another, a couple of good books there. That the, the next one down there, How to Win Friends and Influence People by Dale Carnegie. That's quite an old book now, 1930s, I think it was written. Um, around about the time when there was lots of you know, large American steel companies, that sort of thing. And Dale Carnegie had a job where his responsibility was to kind of go and try and sell whatever product he was, he was, he was sort of marketing to these people. And what he found was, actually, if you're nice to people you can influence them in all sorts of ways and it's amazing what you get in return and apart from anything else you just get lots of friends which is just a, a great kind of place to be in your life and then the last one this is a particularly interesting uh, one to me that i found particularly useful and um, uh, it may not be appeal to everybody uh, it's by darren hardy it's called design your best year ever and it's basically like a workbook. It's not just something that you read. It's actually got lots of pages where you can write down on it. And the idea is that you just pick a 12-month period. So it doesn't have to start in January. You could start in November to the following November or July to July or whatever. And what you do is you set some really big, exciting goals that you want to achieve in that year. And then you kind of break them down into smaller and smaller chunks. So you then decide, okay, what are the monthly targets if you like that I would need to go through the 12 steps in order to achieve my big goal and then each month you break that down into four kind of weekly sets of activities and then daily steps and and I found it just a really really useful way of, of kind of taking a, a really exciting goal you know your goal might be to buy a new car or something like that and if you're just going today with your first set of catalogs that you're going to deliver and you're thinking, oh, I hope I can get a new car. I'd love to be able to buy a new car in a year's time. Then that's, it's a little bit of a stretch of your imagination because you don't even know if it's going to work yet. But if you break that down into the steps to the point where, for example, if you say, right, all I need to do is put out 100 catalogues a day. I know, because I've spoken to my upline and I've seen all the evidence, that you know, in 12 months' time, I'll have a really good customer base. I'll be earning you know, whatever it is, an extra £500 a month. And, and if I save that up, that would be, get me that new car. So that's a really good book to help you kind of get from big, exciting goals to daily steps to achieve them. And the best advice I can give to you really is to make a start on this today. This, this webinar is too short to create a program for everybody individually. Um, but I hope it inspires you to make a start. If, if there's anything that I've gone through there that you wanted a bit more detail on, then just, just let me know. Um, I'm just going to put my email address in here. So if anyone wants to email me at hotmail.co.uk, oops, hotmail.co.uk, or if you want to give me a call, if you'd rather have a chat, that's my mobile number. So feel free to to come back to me um, if you want any clarification of anything I've been through there. So that's the end of the webinar, basically. Um, I'm going to hang around for 10 minutes now. Um, next week, we're back to the beginning again, doing all about getting started. 
so um, we'll be all, all, all the way back around the the training the recording that I've done on this I'll probably get that up um, and recorded tomorrow morning and just so that you're aware if you do want to view any of these recordings then this is where they are you can if you just go onto YouTube they're all stored on YouTube uh, and if you just do a search on Chris Smith clean easy you should find me there and, and you can just subscribe or just watch whichever ones you want